What's up everybody? Brian Peacock back once again, Epic Outdoor Adventures. I'm gonna tie some more flies for you guys. It's that time of year. Uh, got a trip coming Wednesday, going down uh, Tuckasegee River. And uh, this week, uh, bugs have really been hatching well. Um, we have uh, a ton of midges hatching. We have blue wing olives hatching. We have uh, black and gray caddis flies hatching. And uh, word on the street is there's some March browns hatching as well. So everything's a little early this year. Really warm winter so far. We've had a few cold frost days, but uh, for the most part, it's been pretty mild winter. Um, so we're gonna tie a black caddis here for you today. Uh, basic elk hair caddis. Uh, you can also use deer hair. Um, they're both pretty buoyant. <clears throat> so we're gonna start out with a uh, Daiichi um, size 14. And I'm tying this in a size 12, 14, and a 16 as well. Um, I even tie them into 18s, uh, some of the colors. But you can do this in a bunch of different colors. Um, we're doing the black and gray right now because of the winter. The winter caddis is, is a dark grayish black. So we're gonna, uh, using ultra thread, black, uh, 70 denier. I'm gonna put a thread base down on this standard size 14 hook. And <clears throat> I'm gonna get out this might be enough for one more here. You get out this um, grizzly hackle. This is made by Whiting. Um, Whiting hackle, probably one of the best hackles out there. And um, I'm going to tie this in the back. Just come forward and then go back. All right, so. We're only going to need about three or four turns of that. All right, next, we're going to come to our dubbing box. Um, I'm going to get some black or gray. Uh, you can mix some black and gray if you like. Uh, you can do variant colors. I like to do a couple different ones uh, just so you have a couple different options. Um, this is natural rabbit fur. Uh, mixed with some uh, synthetic uh, tinsel ice dubbing uh, just to give a little uh, reflection when the sun hits it add a little sparkle um, we're gonna put a tight noodle on our on our thread here and slide this down and we're going to turn this on. Make sure you tighten it if you need to, as needed. And I'm just going to bring it all the way up to right about there. We're going to leave some space there, about eighth of an inch up to that tie on point of the hook your eye and then I'm going to slide all the dubbing fibers back and do five or six turns to lay everything back all right now I'm going to do a half hitch which I just put my finger in I wrap it down and I twist around one time put my finger against the eye and I slide that right off my finger it's a half hitch, and that's just to stop my thread from unwinding. Let's get control of this thing here again. All right, there we go. Now we're gonna slide over my bobbin rest, and I'm gonna hang my bobbin. <clears throat> I like to trim up the top of my fly a little bit, get some of those long fibers out of there on the top, and that helps the elk hair lay down on the back of this fly and not be pushed way up uh, which creates a wind resistance when it's sticking up and it will twist your tip it all up all right so elk hair we're going to use elk you can use deer like i said um, and then you this comes in different colors as well you can 
play with uh, wing colors if you like. Um, take a little chunk here. You're going to have to play with the amount of hair for each size that you do. All right, it's going to take a little practice to know how much to do. All right, so take a big clump. We're going to grab the long fibers and we're going to knock out all of these under fur and these short fibers that we're not going to use. Uh, that will just fall out of the fly when we tie them on there. All right, get all of them out. Make sure you pinch with this finger really hard so you don't lose your long fibers. Once your long fibers stay in, you're going to get a stacking tool. We're going to insert all of this into our stacking tool. Uh, natural tips down. And then we're going to tap. Oops. Sorry, guys. Lost you. We're going to tap this to get all those fibers and hairs to hit the bottom of this and they'll all line up with each other so they are the right lengths here so there they are all lined up nice and straight grab them real carefully to keep them all together move this out of the way re-grab them with this hand and now we're going to oops I didn't even do the hackle I'm sorry guys Hold on, why I have that? We need to spin our hackle on first. Sorry, I didn't. Jumping ahead of myself here, so. We're gonna come and do a pin trap. Hold that hackle down. Lay it back, tie that in, cut it off. So now we've got the hackle on there. Now we can lay, we want this to end right with the back of our fly. That's how long we want it. So pinch it. We're going to do a pinch wrap, so we pinch the line in between our fingers and roll over the top and come underneath, then we pull it tight, not too tight at first, do another pinch wrap, pull it a little tighter, do one more pinch wrap, a little tighter, be careful with the 70 veneer, it will snap very easy on you. Now I like to do a couple more wraps up the wings that we're keeping and I do a loose wraps not tight wraps so what that does is it lays these fibers down on that fly it gives it more aerodynamics to fly through the and it spreads them out a little more looking like wings rather than looking all crazy like the front end that I didn't do this on so this is the loose wraps against it this is tight wraps against it that's the difference that you get all right when you're spinning deer hair uh, you want to tight wraps and puff it out like that. Um, but we don't want that for the caddis. So, now I want to pick all this up. We're going to go up underneath and make a head and dam up that. Which makes that go up away from the high so you can tie your hook on. I just do a couple half hitches, three or four of them actually, not a couple, three or four half hitches to tie off most of my flies. I don't uh, whip finish them. I find it not necessary anymore. And I also do not glue my flies. Um, find it unnecessary as well. It's just more expense, more time. Uh, when it's unneeded. If I catch five to ten fish on one fly, it's done its job and it can retire in my point of view. <laughs> um, but you know, if you're trying to make them last a really long time, then you might want to glue them if you want to. Now, after you tie it off, 
we're gonna pull these out just a little bit and we're gonna leave just a little bit for like a head and snip them just like that and we can come down here snip this just like that and we'll trim a few little hackle feathers that we caught right there there is our black elk hair caddis or I believe they call it the granum caddis uh, I believe that's what's hatching out there um, so that's it right there guys that's all it is uh, you can also do this in um, without the hackle, just the dubbing and the elk hair, uh, which is even a quicker tie. And um, that one, the body lays down in the water uh, surface uh, just a little farther than this one does. So doing some with the hackle and some without the hackle is always a good idea. Um, you can. Some look like they're actually like spent or, or drowned if they're they're laying down in that film as well. Also, they might look like an emerger coming out as well. So fish like to go after emergers or dead bugs uh, way easier than they like to go after these live ones. Because if you watch the uh, caddis flies fly around, they don't stay on the surface of the water hardly at all. Actually, uh, what they do is they fly around and flutter above the water and they just go down and touch the water and lay them eggs and they'll come back up. And fly around and then come down and touch it with their butt and go back up and um, the trout love them they, they go crazy over them because they can see them and they'll chase them and swat at them and get at them but the the ones that they mainly eat the most are the emergers the emergers are helpless they're coming up they're just free floating in the river they're they, they can't do anything until they hatch come out of that shell and those wings dry all the way off and before they can actually take flight and get away so uh, those emerger patterns are the, the really the ticket on uh, catching a lot of fish. Although it's really fun to skitter these uh, dry flies and watch the fish go crazy over them. So tie up some caddis flies, guys. I hope you get out there and fish soon. Uh, I know some of you guys are in a lot colder regions than we are here in Western North Carolina. So uh, you know, I hope the uh, weather gets you out tight line guys we'll see you next time make sure you subscribe to the channel tell your friends subscribe as well share comment we'll see you next time